worry, save you know, for a later pick. If they don't know what if Curse is doing, whether or not they're going a squishy team, if they have a squishy bot lane, if they have a lane that's very vulnerable to ganks, or if they have a vulnerable jungler, then maybe we go back to that Ari pick. But right now, Vlad, a little bit of a safer pick, is going to be very strong in that top lane against Shen, can just sit there, turn that into a farm lane, and you know, just be generally pretty safe. So that's definitely a good pickup. So we also have the same bands. I just want to note, same bands from Curse this game as we had last game. So Cassiopeia, not going to be available. Olaf, we're not going to see that in top lane either. But we have, uh, we have a few more options from Curse. I'm kind of uh, crossing my fingers for something, uh, something a little bit different from them. There you so go. So we have Nocturne. Crumb is actually Nudu. a favorite of his, is Nocturne. So they get uh, that Nocturne pick. We actually saw Curse playing Kale and Nunu previously in this tournament, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not they pull that back out again. Uh, it actually will be kind of an effective strategy against Kog'Maw because Kale definitely has the strong harass early. It's not something you normally see. It's kind of a niche pick. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to see whether that's the case. It will protect against Ari's burst damage as well as Vlad's, though, if that's something they're looking to do. But Crumb's definitely extremely aggressive with those ganks. We do see Paradoxal is going to be grabbing that Ari again, and it's all down to who they want as their jungler. Uh, right now, I, Mundo is available, Shivana's available. I would definitely understand a Mundo pick, and there it is. Nintendo on Mundo will have that tanky front line, Vladimir and Mundo, to protect Kog'Maw. So for, for some people out there who may not even do uh, draft mode even, what's, why did they decide to take Ari later as opposed to that second, uh, second round of picks? Well, I, it's kind of weird to take Ari at all with how tanky their team is, but the concern is really um, seeing whether or not they're going to counter you out. If you have a jungler which, you know, someone like Maokai, Maokai could set up the snare into the Morgana uh, snare, and that's a really easy kill early on and just really shuts down Ari in lane before Ari gets to level 6. And Ari really needs to get those early levels in order to get a, you know, an advantage. And also, if you consider if Curse has a really strong jungler where Curse automatically has early map control, that's also a weak situation for Ari. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of that now, but having the Mundo versus the Nocturne, it is kind of a favorable matchup. Nocturne is a stronger jungler uh, as far as ganking presence, but Mundo definitely is tankier earlier, has the faster clearing speed, has the more counter jungling potential, and so if Mundo can take that early advantage, it allows Ari to roam, because that's what Ari wants to do as a champion. She wants to just be all over the place, taking names, just, you know, destroying the enemy team, and that's what they're going to be looking to do. But we are seeing double, uh, I'm like sitting here, I double lift in Vayne, it's just like synonymous in my mind. We're seeing Vayne uh, bottom, so Vayne and Nunu is going to be an interesting matchup. Kog'Maw as a champion, he's an auto attack champion, he has fantastic damage early, but Nunu, he's got a very low cooldown slow, it's about a six second cooldown, it has a four second slow, so that's an attack speed slow, it's really going to shut down a lot of Nunu's damage, it's actually a really strong pickup, because uh, Nunu's not going to be as effective in those exchanges, whereas Vayne can just sit there, throw off the burst damage, really quickly burst down Janna's shield, and that's the key, against Janna you want to burst down the shield, deny that AD, and that's what uh, Vayne and Nunu is going to do in that lane. I can see Vayne being pretty effective in the early game. She does have to tumble, she can get in on Kog'Maw, but once Kog'Maw hits six, once he gets that artillery shot, I think they're gonna see, I think they're gonna see Curse maybe back off a little bit. They become a little bit less effective because Vayne, she doesn't have the biggest range. Granted, she can close gaps, but her just flat out auto attack range, not the greatest. Yeah, that's definitely the weakness, and that's also kind of why we've seen Cog doing so well. He's, you know, always been one of the strongest late-game champions, but it used to be that his early weakness uh, would sometimes set him behind. That's not as much of a case anymore. You don't see those really aggressive harass lanes that you used to. Cogmaw can't, you know, he can sit there and freely farm once he hits six in particular because he has that excellent range. And then, you know, being able to farm Cogmaw for that mid-game, for that late-game fight is really just effective. So it'll be interesting to see. Nocturne, though, has great kill potential. We have Vayne for the burst damage. Nocturne with his ganking kill potential. And then once Nocturne and Shen hit six, there's always the threat of a tower dive bottom because we'll have Nocturne coming in, Shen with the ultimate. That's going to be a really dangerous lane for uh, Zig and Pixel in the bottom lane. We've got a lot of mobility here on Curse. So like I said, like you said before, we have Shen being able to go anywhere he wants with his ultimate. Nocturne got wonderful mobility as well, and we can also we're also playing a little bit defensive here. If Curse gets engaged upon Morgana, just pop the ult. Nice counter initiation. We also got a nice counter initiation from Nunu as well. You just stand in the bush, get that ult ready. Everyone slowed. Pretty good chunk of damage there too. Yeah, but the concern is obviously, um, you know, with that burst potential that we have from Curse, 
Uh, there's also at the same time a really strong team comp from Mono, and they recognize, hey, we get this Cog into this late game, he's a dominant force. We have Mundo up front, we have Tank uh, Vladimir, so that's also going to have more sustained damage, but then we have Ari to get us through the early portion of the game. We have Mundo to get us through the early portion of the game, and because of Vayne's range, because Vayne has such a short range, Ari as that kind of assassin mid-champion uh, could maybe in those early fights pick off Vayne and then really quickly curse his behind, but... Uh, it should be an interesting matchup, and I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. We're about to see how this rolls out, but everyone, are you ready? Game number two, Mono versus Curse, loading up right now. We got our teams. Look at that. Concentration coming in from both teams. Fantastic to, fa fantastic to have all eight of our teams here. Wonderful that they can join us here at IPL4 at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. And very soon we will be into this game. Once again, the bands from both teams, Mono's banned out Galio, Karthus, and Alistar. Curse, same bands as last time, banning out Cassiopeia, Olaf, and Rise. And we are in the game, ready to go. Yeah, and I'm curious whether or not we'll see Curse with the early invade. They do have a slightly stronger team. Both teams have an exceedingly strong uh, early game. But if we can get the Morgana Snare into the Shen Taunt, there's definitely the potential for the kill there. And if you can slow down Mundo, allow Crumbs to get off to an early advantage, uh, then, you know, that won't be such an, uh, such an issue. But at the same time, Pixel does have Clairvoyance. You know, wards don't really counter out Nocturne as effectively as other champions because he can take unusual ganking paths. So that clairvoyance, if they can keep track of Nocturne, Mundo can be more effective with his counter jungle, and then also they can know that they're a little bit safer in that bot lane. So we got a little bit of a defense here in the top tribush from Curse. Mono not really doing that much. Both teams are playing a little bit on the defensive end and want to be able to secure their own buffs. And uh, it looks like both junglers are going to be starting on red. 30 seconds. Of course, you know, they both, uh, both junglers can also get the... the who's a, Mondo's a little bit of a stronger level too, I think. I, I Honestly, this is such an awkward thing. I literally couldn't hear what you just said. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, think, I think Mundo has a little bit of an advantage for a level 2 gank. Uh, he's really, he's well, actually, Nocturne you know, definitely has that kill potential. Mundo has a little bit more damage, but Nocturne has that closing speed, has the fear. And so I, I don't know that we're going to see a level 2 gank from either of these junglers. I think you know, all of the lanes are generally going to be pretty safe. I think we might see Crumbs, get, if he gets that red buff, going for the top gank onto Zion Spartan, get Vladimir before he gets that pull, because it's pretty common to go with Transfuse first. And if he can get a gank a look, uh, coupled with you know, the taunt from Shen, then you get the fear off. That's a really aggressive gank. But um, regardless, you know, we are seeing both junglers are going after the red. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch. I mean, I, I think we'll see an early ward from Curse. In, down in the river to guard against that Mundo gank. That's definitely something they're going to want to do. But even if Mundo comes in, I, I don't know that at level 2 there's that much kill potential from Mono's bot lane. Cop and Elements in bot lane before Mono. They're going to go ahead and get uh, one, or till, one or two creeps advantage early on. Shen and Vladimir up top lane doing what they can. And we got wards. Both teams have awarded the tri brush area up there down by Dragon, down that bot river. Ari, Morgana in mid. True damage is going to be helping out immensely for Ari later on once Morgana gets that shield around level 2, level 3. However, uh, however, Nijaki wants the player. And Crumbs getting the raise. Mundo getting the blue. Mundo's a little bit low going for that blue buff, so he will have to back and hopefully he doesn't die right there. <laughs> but so here's the thing um, you know, Mundo is exceedingly fast. Gets a little bit low early, really not a concern as he continues to jungle, but Nocturne, I think being a little bit cautious, he maybe could have gotten that top gank, but you know, there's always the concern of how successful it'll be, and if they know that Mundo you know, is expecting that, if Mundo comes in for the counter gank, then very quickly Curse falls behind. That's definitely not what they want to do, because they want to get to that mid portion of the game where all of their ultimates are going to be up, where they have that strength. They don't want to allow Mono any sort of early advantage that is going to allow them to stall the game any more than they would uh, care to. Elements taking a little bit of a field trip, getting a ward right up in Mono's jungle. Just to see where they're going, but Mono did spot it, so they do know they're being watched. Mundo grabbing small golems, and he will have the back again, because he's not, uh, not doing so hot on health going through the jungle. But this will soon change, and Pobelter actually getting pretty chunked out in top lane by Zion Spartan. Now, Curse is actually being pretty aggressive 
in bot, pushing the waves to the tower. They want to make sure Mono in bot is on the defensive end. Yeah, Mono I mean, there's again. definitely, that's that will slow down uh, the farm for Zig a little bit. Slow. But at the same time, he has enough oh, damage output. Great. It really shouldn't be that difficult to farm underneath. But we do top have Crumbs coming crumbs. up top. Cobelter with the taunt, and Crumbs is going to be able to get in range for the fear. The pool will get him out of there, but there's the fear. They're actually tower diving this, so Crumbs gets the rip up. There's the ignite, and they are going to get the first blood going down to Cobelter. So an early advantage for Curse. Very, very well executed from Crumbs, but here comes Nintendo. Will he be able to connect with anything? We have a cleaver, we have something. We got the exhaust coming down on Crumbs. We got the fire, we got the AoE. Will be enough. Where's what? Oh my Spell god. Spell shield. Oh no. He missed the cleave. He, he got too again. close range. Oh, that could have been so much more. Crumbs like, with the fantastic play there knew he was dead if he tried to run. It sets up the really easy short range cleave, so instead. Crumbs juked back into Mundo, knowing that Mundo, you know, is going to be uh, tossing that cleave and just able to juke it out. Really fantastic play there, and uh, it, it's a shame. I mean, if Nintendo had been able to get that, having an early advantage as a jungler is just, you know, can be devastating, particularly when you have such an aggressive jungler as Mundo, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for Mundo to get an advantage, but uh, really effective play by Crumbs. Now that Curse knows that Mundo is in the top lane, once again, it's still pushing a bot as much as they can. And you know what, the Nijaki's do a little bit of pushing himself, but uh, Mono trying to do what they can top lane and see if they can't take a little bit of damage off of this tower. Nintendo, once again, waiting in the bush. See if, uh, just to see if Pobelter gets a little bit overzealous. Get a nice little quick gank of him top of lane. A little bit of deja vu there. Yeah, but actually, Pobelter coming down the ward here, he will be kind of vulnerable coming up once again, but he does have the dash, so he should be able to get out of there. But uh, actually dashing into through. the Lion Spartan, so a little bit of a bait, and Nintendo is chasing him down now. He's going to be able to get a lot of damage, but they are going to back off. Uh, Zion Spartan didn't have his ignite up, otherwise maybe they would have powered to have that. So Pobelter is going to be safe in this lane, going to be able to you know heal himself back up and be able to continue to So now Nintendo is satisfied with what he's done top lane, going to be returning to the jungle Zion Spartan. Also, just a little bit, just as low as Pobalter is, and Nijak, he actually going in, in the mid, with the old Empire Rexel, tries to get away. Oh, the binding, just barely missing under tower. Yeah, I don't think he was expecting to get the stun, because he actually had the kill if he had just waited a second for that stun. But in the meantime, Crumbs coming up top, there's another Shen taunt. Zion Spartan ghosting, trying to get out of there. He's going to be able to pull, but Crumbs with the fear, can it break? It will oh. just barely break underneath that tower, so... Uh, Zion Spartan will be safe and going to recall. Crumbs, he's, he's getting some good engages on here, waiting for the pool to end, getting the fear if he can. But uh, you know what? Zion Spartan, I think, is the. He, he did burn the ghost on that, trying to get away. So you know, now he's got, he has no more summoner spells left for the time being, and Nintendo actually wandering around with the ward in that tri bush. Curse knows they know to back off accordingly. And all meanwhile, Paradox was actually doing a, doing a nice little push in mid. Waiting for Nijaki to actually get back into lane. Hey, a little bit, uh, how, how are we doing on gold here? Are we doing pretty good for herself? Ooh, a little bit more, we could get a new large rod if we so desire. But to see how that build works out. Yeah, and it'll, it should be interesting to see whether or not we see any aggression over these blue buffs. Ari definitely needs it. Uh, if Ari gets the blue buff and Morgana doesn't, then of course she can just push into the lane. Not worry about it. Though Morgana is one of the strongest pushers in the game. Has three Dorans, so should be okay as far as sustainability there. I, I think that a lot of that has to deal with the fact that she expects him to be extremely aggressive early. Maybe you see a little bit of an invade after that blue, but um, Nintendo kind of running around, not really sure what to do. Will be able to pick up his red. And then we'll see what kind of, you know, ganks or invasion we'll see from the shortly. So Ari did decide to go back, got three Dorans as well. So we got a little, nice even build. Same item build going on in the mid. And we actually have a whole lot of pings going on around Dragon Area. Mono does have a ward in the pit. We had a few pings going down from Curse as well. They saw Mundo coming down through the tri -bush. They, they saw, I think they also spot him around the Wraiths as well. But the, now I think um, uh, Dragon... Being somewhat considered, they have the ward down there. They just want to make sure they have that insurance and want to make sure. But Morgana actually Morgana coming in on the Paradoxical in. gets the stun, and Paradoxical is just barely able to get out of there. The Ignite goes off, but Paradoxical kiting around, able to take down Nijaki, even though it looked like Nijaki had the kill. Fantastic play there. Wonderful, wonderful work from Paradoxical. Then we'll be going home with a little bit extra money in the wallet.
And but still though, this entire game though so far, Curse has been just doing nothing but pushing this bottom lane this entire time. It hasn't been, they're sufficiently warded, they're sufficiently protected, ward in the tribush right there to know when Mundo's coming around. There's not a whole lot they're doing about it. And that's why they're having to run away from Shen. And more pings is going down from Curse in Bot River. So I think that may be a signal for some wards to possibly go down. Just so if Mono decides to get a little bit gutsy, go for the dragon. They know where to be. Kobolds are free farming just a little bit, waiting for Vlad to come back. And yeah, Curse elements on top. Doing nothing but pushing the tower. Yeah, and that push is denying Zig some farm. He is significantly behind Top at this point. Top, if he can get that farm, Bane is, you know, obviously one of the highest game scores in that mid game. Um, you know, comparable damage to Kog'Maw. The only thing is Kog'Maw has the significant range damage. And we actually have Nocturne ulting in mid. Morgana did throw off the ultimate and the fear goes off. So there's the snare and Paradoxical is going to go down. A nice gank by Crumbs, and uh, they're actually going to be grouping for Dragon now to try and take that early gold advantage. There we go. Well, you got you got the mid dead. You have the man advantage. You might as well. Dragon's here. Dragon's close by. You have four people around. You might as well just go ahead and do it. And if need be, Shen does have the ult up top, so he can just come back around if Mon decides to engage on this. They'll go ahead and secure the Dragon for themselves, and then back off, go back to their respective lanes. But man, look at Zion Spark in the top lane. He's losing quite a bit of health to Pole Belter here in the top lane. He doesn't start, he's got his revolver. Should be getting the, the Rota once he has the money. Not uh, not not all too close just about yet. But uh, he's, until he gets that Rota, I mean, he does have some sustain. But uh, Shen's just out, yeah, just doing better than uh, he can sustain. Yeah, and the big thing is, oh, actually, we see Nijacky, uh almost getting caught, catching Nintendo there. I was wondering, uh, Nintendo was steering, stealing those raids, whether or not he would throw up the snare. But the big thing is, uh, Shen, once he gets that early advantage, he can become kind of an abusive lane because he has that sustain. You're right, once Vladimir is able to get that Woda, uh, it should, you know, turn around and should just continue to be a farming lane. Uh, but Vladimir definitely a little bit behind right now, which is going to set them back a little bit in these mid-game fights. But if Bane can get farmed for Curse, having that blood boil from Nunu is definitely going to be huge. That It's just a massive buff, uh, just going to be significantly increasing Bane's damage output. Paradoxical putting down a ward in the river, but Nijak is being a little bit aggressive, taking what he can from the raise. But uh, new support, pretty much all really new support does is it stays in the bush, blood boil, and a snowball here and there if need be. Zion Spartan, the Probalt is duking out top lane at once again. Nijak and Paradox, a little bit of a little bit of harassed damage in the mid, and ult going down on the Probalt trying to keep him away. Still even help from both of those champs for Pro Belter deciding to uh, retreat back to tower may decide to back. Yeah, and Paradoxical, you know, it's to that point where Ari is extremely strong, looking for those roaming kills, going to be leaving mid a little bit, so it's going to allow Nijaki to deny some experience and gold there um, because they just have excellent ward coverage. They recognize that Ari is looking to be getting off some ganks, so they have wards all along the river. Shen can still be aggressive in that top lane and, you know, recognize that he has the advantage. Ken dude helping Paradox a little bit in the mid, but we actually see Crumbs going down through the enemy jungle. But at top, top, we actually lane. have Cobalter chasing down Zion Spartan. He does have his Ignite, but he's not going to go for it. He maybe could have ghosted in, get that taunt, get the Ignite, very quickly pick up a kill. Not sure if Zion Spartan should be sticking around. Nudo actually coming into Crumbs. We do have the fear going off, and he's chasing after Nintendo a little bit. The exhaust from Nintendo goes off, and his ultimate is there, so he's just a little bit too tanky. And once again, Cobalter jumping in after Zion Spartan with the taunt. He nice. does have the exhaust, the and there it is. The Ignite able to take down Zion Spartan underneath that tower. Nice. That's a nice, nice little, nice little uh, tug of war going back there, just checking to see. <laughs> That's this. Oh, man, what are you doing? Going back and forth through that bush, what are you doing? <laughs> I like hopping all over the map. I mean, there's action everywhere. What, what, why aren't we, you know, that's, that's what you want. And so that's what we're seeing in an aggressive game. Zig doing a pretty good job farming bottom, but we do have a slight advantage for top in that lane. And um, I don't know, it should be interesting when this next dragon spawns, uh, you know, who has the advantage at that point. We definitely have strong team fight teams from both teams. So cop 129, Kogma 108. Mid oh, the, the snare. Nice snare from Nightjack. Go down. Old should be able to finish off. Actually manages to break it, but will the Ignite finish her off? Yes. Wow, so just sitting in the brush, waiting for the time. Nijacky with the excellent placement there. 
um, you know, once Paradoxal had cleared those wards, and so Nijaki getting a little bit of a farm advantage, able to go steal some rates earlier, here gonna deny some experience, get some push going on in that tower, and if they can, you know, get an early advantage like they have right now, a 3k gold advantage, and then push down some of those towers, um, you know, they could maybe deny some golden experience from Mono. I just look at the farm difference right here in all three lanes. All three lanes, we got Pixel, you know, just putting the tornado on elements just to uh, just annoy him, just a tad, but uh, bot lane. 138 to 117. Mid lane, you got 118 to 96. Top lane, look at Shen, 93 to 77. This curse is just winning every single lane right now. There's not a whole lot you can do when you're losing every single lane. It's just, it's kind of a little bit confusing for where Nintendo should be. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. They don't, you know, we have very safe lanes from all of Curse, so there's not going to be a huge ganking presence from uh, Mundo. He recognizes, you know, Morgana is going to be an extremely safe lane. If not, uh, maybe when they bait out the Nijaki ultimate, um, you know, like we saw earlier, we'll see some aggression, some counter engaging there. But in the meantime, Paradox, uh, Paradoxical is going to be able to pick up that blue buff and going to, you know, maybe see if he can run around and pick up some kills. Top trying to get a few shots off on Zig while he's retreating the tower, but uh, got the artillery shot, gonna be able to fend off just a little bit, but it looks like Mono just like, you know, we're just gonna keep pushing to our tower, we might as well go ahead and get the small golems while we wait. This is a nice, nice little snack while we're doing that, but uh, Nintendo actually coming around, no vision from first, they don't know he's in the neighborhood. Pillbelter, if he extends a little bit too far, he's going to have a roof surprise. He's got the clock that's coming in, as well as the knock and roll here on Zion's Fire. Nintendo comes in, not sure how much he's going to be able to do. The old front line will finish. Crumbs going down. Pillbelter both going down. That is exactly what Mono needed. And that's what we've seen from Nintendo this entire tournament. He's got great awareness where he needs to be as a jungler. Uh, he's caught a ton of counter ganks this entire uh, time. He recognizes Shen's trying to be extremely aggressive, shut down Vladimir in lane. So Crumbs, you know, he knows he's going to have that aggressive ult, sitting around waiting for his opportunity, able to take it, and that's definitely going to propel Zion's part in this mid game. And uh, it should be interesting to see, you know, whether or not we see some more aggression. Shen generally very safe, but if we see Paradoxical and Nigo going up together, they could definitely take that tower. Uh, maybe be able to pick up a kill there. So we got a little bit, uh, we got a little bit of gold going around. Let's see what all of our champs are buying. We got the Loda finishing for Vladimir right now. Finishing off, got some Merc treads as well. A little extra magic resist. A little bit of tenacity. Won't be, uh, won't be taunted for as long from this point forward. But we do have a Dragon. Curse is there, ready to take it. And we got pings going down from Mono. Not too far away. Pretty sure they have an A, but they do have vision. They got to see down. It's it's too, just too tough for them to yeah. you know, deny that dragon. They have great ward coverage on Curse. We actually saw Pixel just dropping a pink ward there, but yep. uh, Elements had had a pink ward in that brush previously, and Elements. Uh, as a support, you kind of always ask me, hey, uh, a lot of times supports, they go for that early oracles, roaming around trying to get vision. Elements is actually very proactive in getting those pink wards. He's always kind of vocal about it. You know, pink wards are just such a great investment if you understand where the enemy's wards are. And so able to take that map control um, is definitely huge. But uh, we'll have to see. Z uh, we do have Nijaki building that uh, needlessly large rod, probably going to build a early Zonias so that he can engage on Kog'Maw. If they can get Kog'Maw in those team fights, have the flash in from Nijaki, then you know, very quickly those fights can turn in their favor. We've been seeing a lot of the Morganos actually opting for things like early death caps instead of going for the Zonias. And the Zonias is just such a wonderful part of her kit if you have it. Just go in, ult, Zonias, and it's almost always the same ult. Almost. Yeah, but and the key is whether or not, you know, you think you already have the damage as a team. They have a significant amount of damage, but we do have Nocturne coming up top. Nintendo once again waiting, allowing Zion Spartan to just safely take this tower in case there's a gank. Um, you know, so a little bit of time wasted for Nintendo, but he knew what he was doing. He was sitting there protecting his carry. Um, yeah, so Morgana, you know, a lot of uh, AP champions, they, can, they have that versatility. Morgana, if she wants a little bit of burst, if she needs a little bit more poke, then, you know, she, obviously she can go for something like a Rabadon. But if she wants to have a hard engage, like she will against a champion like Pogma, it's very common to go after that Zonia's. So about 18 minutes in, and like we said before, Curse is just doing fantastic in pretty much every lane. Despite the fact they do have one tower down in top, if you look at the creep kills, it is a little bit of a different story. I mean, Vayne still has a little bit of a lead on Kog'Maw. Look at Vladimir, still only, only 10 behind now. 
as opposed to Shen. If you look at Ari in the mid with Morgana, that's a pretty big stun for Morgana right there, but Morgana in mid, 30 creeps up, and oh, we got wow. Nocturne coming in with the ult here on bot lane. We got the Jandal clearing everyone away, so Mono may be safe here. We actually had Shen ult crumbs just for a little bit of insurance, but while he's down there, Zion Spartan is top lane free to farm. And a, once again, that's just Nintendo with excellent map positioning, excellent awareness. Um, you know, they had the Shen Nocturne combo and they were trying to go for an aggressive tower dive. That's what we were kind of talking about earlier. So Nintendo recognizing that was the situation and it will allow Zion Spartan once again to, you know, continue farming, continue catching up into this game and pressure that second tower. So realizing you got, got a little bit of a good idea. It was like, you know, Shen's about to recall. He should probably be backing off right about now. But uh, yeah, we're pushing it to the second tier tower in top lane. Cop trying to make something happen on Zig, but is slowed, will not be able to continue pursuit and crumbs, securing the red buff for himself. That was Zion Spartan also well, doing, doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of dancing, waiting for Pearl Belter in that bush. A little bit of a, a little bit of a bush dance there. And bot lane mono, they see uh, they see curse is once again doing their pushing thing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm curious, you know, once we start seeing these team fights break out, once we start seeing everyone together, how Vayne is going to do against this double AP comp, because it's definitely pretty strong. We actually have Pobelter chasing down Zion Spartan in the top lane. I'm not sure how full he's going to go for it. He is going to back off now. Uh, Zion does have enough sustain there, but because, you know, like we said earlier, we have a very short range team. Uh, everyone on the team is short range, but the, I don't know, it, it'll be interesting. The Morgana shield should be able to protect Vayne for the most part, um, but there's definitely a lot of burst if, you know, she gets too much into that kill zone. Now, we haven't really seen a whole lot of movement come from Morgana or Ari, really. I mean, I mean Ari is actually pretty mobile with the ult. We would have expected to see maybe an attempted gank on one of the other two lanes, but uh, Nijack and Paradox will usually stick into their guns, stick into the mid lane. Why, why is that? Well, the big thing is both are extremely strong pushers, so Ari wants to be leaving the lane, but Morgana is just constantly pushing the wave, forcing Paradoxical, uh, Paradoxical to sit there, and we do have the tower going down bottom, but their pings are off on Zion Spartan, so Janna and Ari coming up here trying to keep vision of Morgana, not allow her to, you know, kind of engage, um, and Zion Spartan will be fine there, but it's primarily because of the pushing capabilities. They know if they leave, they don't have a successful gank, they're going to be denied experience and gold, and they're going to threaten their tower going down. Cop and Elements coming up into the mid. Tornado will keep them away. But uh, we do have Crumbs here in top lane with Zion Spartan. And Nijaki still just sticking to his guns, staying in the mid. And it looks like Paradoxal will also be handed the blue from Nintendo. He's going to be taking that back with him. Crumbs, Po Belter doing what they can up top lane. But now he's, we're, we, we're seeing Mono group up now, just just a little bit. We're seeing both teams actually now grouping up a little bit. Ping's going down on Baron area. They got a little bit of vision on Curse and Paradox will actually getting caught in that little side bush there. But I think Mono might be gearing up to try and charge down this mid tower. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It kind of looks like both teams are trying to pressure this tower. I think it's a lot of it's just defensive play. They don't, they want to be aware of where the enemy team does. So by all, everyone grouping mid, it forces the enemy to kind of show their hand. Um, it doesn't allow them to kind of roam and pick up kills. And right now, Curse, they, they definitely are the, more of the aggressors. They want to pick up those early kills to try and catapult them through this mid game. So by, you know, Mono just coming down bot, uh, coming in that mid lane, they force Curse to show themselves and they know they're safe. So we got Kogma with Mundo here by the Baron area, getting some free shots or attempting some free shots here on Shen. And we have Vlad, top lane, farming freely. But Curse is now taking the opportunity to push mid while they can. Cop is here with Elements and Nijaki. The Blood Boil doing so much, so many good things for Cop right about now. Yeah, I think it's, it's also going to be interesting. We do see Mono pressuring uh -oh. this Baron here, and that's kind of why Curse is also mid, because they recognize Mono is one of the most aggressive teams in League of Legends at taking that Baron, but they're definitely uh, in position for Curse to engage. We actually have Paradoxical chasing down Nijaki here, not going to be able to get the charm, but uh, Nijaki turning back into him, gets the ultimate off. There's the Shen ult, and Crumbs jumping onto Zion Spartan. Pixel very close to going down. Pobelter chasing away Zig, and so we do have Mundo going down to Vayne. Vayne definitely in a good position here. Zion Spartan is going to go down, and now Pobelter is down as well, but Elements able to get his full ultimate off on the Paradoxical, so there's another kill for them, and uh, you know, Cog never really able to get in that fight like he wanted to, never able to deal that damage that you expect from Cog. So that's a three for two, pretty good for Curse, I mean, we got, we, we, we got a Baron fight forced, Mono kind of got what they wanted, but uh, realized 
They may have bitten off a little bit more than they can chew right there in the Baron area. And we've seen Mono do aggressive Baron play quite a bit, but the elements will go ahead and clean up whatever wards may be remaining in Baron area. And that's one of the strengths of Curse's team. They, you know, recognize that Mono likes going for these extremely aggressive Barons, going for Baron when you're low health, going for Baron when you don't really have a huge advantage, and just a lot of teams, they kind of sit around a Baron, they clear a ward, and they're like, hey, we're just going to wait a second, so you know you don't need to jump on them. Mono is like, hey, we cleared a ward, let's do it, and they just jump in, <laughs> go after that. So we have Crumbs on Nocturne, and we have uh, Pope Alter Shen, so those are two global kind of champions. They can split push and then know that they're going to be in range for that Baron, be able to engage but right now we do see Mono going after this dragon. Uh, Nocturne's the only one there, but they don't have vision, so they will be able to take it. And that's a nice little gold uh, boost for Mono there. The ward going down in that bush right as Nijek enters with the shield. Ping's going down from Curse into the bot river. But uh, they see Mon they see they know Mono's grouping up. We got the oracles on Janna. We got an oracles on Nunu. So both teams trying to do what they can to reduce enemy vision. And you know what, just, just a nice little note, if you're, if you're facing a team that has oracles, don't stop placing wards. You can still have a good idea where the enemy team is, even if they take out the ward that you just placed. Yeah, and a lot of the times, you can get wards that maybe bait in the enemy. You know if, if the ward's positioned closer to your side, you'll be fine. Uh, but we do have Curse very aggressively coming down this tower, very close to you know pushing it down. So. Uh, we'll see whether or not Monokin saw that, whether or not Curse maybe tries to bait a fight around Baron. They do have the AoE to do it. Mundo, or, or, sorry, Nunu does have an Oracle, so they can clear out those wards, force Mo uh, Mono to engage, and then get off the full Nunu ultimate into a Morgana ultimate, and that's just going to be huge for Curse. Nintendo up around the Baron area, once again, clearing out the vision of Curse. Ping's going down from Mono. I think they're going to start making their movement up to the pit. Nintendo is there taking out the wards, Crumbs has got, and Nijacky is out in front. I think you were looking for a binding. We're waiting for Mono to start up on the Baron. Shen, he is in top lane, he's not too far away. He can ult in whenever he needs to. Paradoxical, we got no we got no stun from Nijacky, misses everyone. But now we got this minion wave pushing up in mid. We may see Mono doing something to the tower while we wait for uh, while we wait for engage and on Baron. I, I just love, we have this slow build up here. Actually, Nijacky getting caught is actually going to jump into him, use his ultimate, going to throw off the Zonias, but is going to go down almost immediately after. Elements with the ultimate, Paradoxical skirting around the outside, and Cop chasing him down with that vein. Zion Spartan is going to go down, Paradoxical is going to go down as well. Cog was already bursted down, so a huge fight for Curse, and that's what this is, this excitement building up in the crowd. I've been listening to him, like, what's this earthquake, this thunderous sound? We have those AMD, you know, like, slammers. I don't even know what they're called, but just building up that drum roll for the fight. <laughs> for Curse, for the fight, able to take down this Baron now, and that's a huge advantage for Curse. Four members of Curse still up, and they can go ahead and take this Baron for free, pretty convincingly. And, you know, we got some turrets going down in the meantime as well. There's not a whole lot Nintendo can do about this other than a, uh, a quick smite steal, which he's not, gonna be, he's not even going to bother, and Curse has secured the Baron for themselves. And so the Baron, and we are continuing with this game, Curse is definitely at a huge advantage right now. Uh, they can get into the Cog, and that's the big thing, whether or not you can get into him. Elements just free to get off an entire ultimate, protect his team. They're able to zone Paradoxical and Cog off the fight, so without that damage output, they just can't, you know, deal the damage they need. They can't get into Vayne, even though Vayne is short range. Vayne has enough survivability with the dive, uh, with the condemn, that there's, you know, Mono, they're not getting the hard engages onto Vayne that they need, and she, uh, Cop is just clearing up these fights. So now we have Baron buff on Curse, and they can just go ahead and once again, just like game one, we can get the nice slow push into the base. Oh, but Pope Belter on Paradoxical. Paradoxical. Paradoxical is trying to get the counter engage, and Pope is maybe regretting that decision just a little bit. We have the rest of Mono chasing, but they will decide to back off now that Nijaki is here. Vladimir is off taking blue, so he should be, he's going to be giving that to Ari just so they have that right now. They need that right now because it looks like Curse is going to start pushing once again any minute. They're clearing the wave, letting it mid push on its own. They're going to go ahead, regroup, take another objective. You know what, top tower is looking pretty juicy. They might be going for that next. 
Now, here's the concern, and we kind of saw this with CLG earlier, but uh, Curse, they have a short-range team. That makes it tough to push down towers, whereas we've got lots of clearing potential from Mono. However, by the same merit, Curse has these split pushers. They have Shen. They have Nocturne. So they can sit there, split push these other lanes. Paradoxical actually getting snared by Morgana there, but they don't have to all come down mid. They can send Cop Morgana mid. They know they're safe, but in the meantime, Shen can push top, Nocturne can push bottom, and you see that's a huge wave down there. He's going to get some significant damage on the tower. Maybe pull Mono out of position where Curse can get that effective engage that they want, pick off those uh, champions, and get some kills. There's not a whole lot Mono can do right now about this split push. There's quite a large, healthy wave of minions here in the bot lane. We got two members of Curse in the mid, three members of Elements is here as well. And uh, Poe Belter, Zion Spartan continuing again their extended battle over across this entire match. We just need to wait for the mini waves. Cop can go and get a few shots on turret and just back off. He's do that two, three more times. That turret will fall. Crumbs just needs to wait for that wave. He'll be able to take that turret down. It's a war. It's it's. I'm not sure how Mono is going to be able to defend this. We actually got the stun coming on Paradoxical. We got a flash away from Elements. Cop trying to get some damage in his game. Paradoxical coming back in with the ult. Elements has no choice but to run away just to secure, just to be sure that he will live through this fight. Cop, curse. They're retreating from mid, and the rest of the team looks like they're going to be regrouping in just a moment. Yeah, I almost thought that Mono could have pursued that fight. It looked like Curse was just going to burst down Tar Paradoxical. That's what they were waiting for. They were waiting for the Morgana Snare, just slowly pushing that tower and then pick someone off. But then Paradoxical turning it around, almost picking off Shen, almost picking off Morgana. Didn't want to run into the Morgana ultimate, considering that Shen's also going to have his ultimate, be able to cancel out that kill. So um, it would have been kind of interesting to see, but Paradoxical definitely doesn't want to be too aggressive, doesn't want to give up a quick kill, which would just kind of result in the game ending as Curse, you know, with that 4v5 advantage, would be able to barrel down mid, get an inhibitor, and then you know pressure the advantage from there. I can understand why Mono decided to not engage on that though, because Nocturne was bottom, Ult is up, he's not too far away. If he needs to join the fight, he can just do so. Same thing for Shen. Mono knows that they have to be on the defensive end. You got two champs on Curse with Global Ult who can join the fight at any time, and Dragon will be going for free for Curse. It's a little bit more gold for them. Yeah, and Crumb's going to be able to take down that dragon. I, again, the AMD, you know, sponsorship here with those, uh, I, I don't even know what they're called, but the they're sticks. almost like the Voodoo the here. Uh, we, you know, that's what we need for next time. We need those, those horns going off. But um, I, mean, I, I have two AMD Thundersticks up here with me, but uh, I'm not oh, sure if right, I want to be uh, clapping these things into the microphone. We might break something. <laughs> Yeah, but there is significant damage and survivability from Mono. Now we have the double wheel. We got that. They actually rushed that earlier on. So the double wheel couple that with double Rabadon. So they've got lots of uh, AP burst damage. They have lots of sustainability. And then Mundo working on a late Warmogs, actually. So if he can finish that, have that tankiness where they can protect Cog. That's, that's the big thing, whether or not they can protect Cog. And so Janna gives them that, you know, kind of survivability. But if Morgana, you know, we have Nocturne can engage on Cog, and he's got his own shield. Morgana can engage on Cog. She's got her Zonias. She can also throw the shield onto Cop. And so Zig, not really comfortable this match. He can't really get the damage that he wants. And so we actually see uh, Crumbs starting to pressure this mid. Maybe we'll have an engage shortly underneath this tower. Curse still, once again, we're trying to push, but actually Crumbs is not too far away. Pixel puts the CV down. They see him in their own jungle, screwing around. Stun, we got Paradoxical, we got them in the binding, we got the shield from Nijack, but they will decide to back up a little bit. But you know what, Crumbs is not too far away. If Mono decides to push this, we could have everyone from Curse there in an instant. But meanwhile, we got Poe Belter pushing to shove in top tower, tier two. If Mono, uh, Baron buff is gone, but you know what, this split push is still really effective for Curse right now because there's not a whole lot Mono can do to defend against this. Yeah, but at the same time, they have been doing a good job of stalling Curse. Uh, Curse been trying to pressure this tower, but not really able to get it. And actually, we see Cop jumping on this tower, is going to be able to drop it. So there's a tower, and uh, Nintendo getting some plays on the crumbs over the wall, but uh, a tower was successful with Curse. They did lose the Baron buff, though, so uh, Zig actually chasing him down with that you know, artillery barrage, getting some damage onto Morgana, and uh, now Mono being the aggressors, now that they have that Baron, uh, the Baron is down, they know that Zig has that range advantage. That tower in mid for Curse, one smack, and it goes down, so Mono said, you're like, you know what, we need to go mid, finish the job, and they're actually pinging around Baron area. I think they're going to see if they can't force a fight here once it comes up. 
curse. We're a little bit scattered here, so they need to be a little bit careful, but Mono traveling as a group. They want to be very, very gingerly, gingerly approaching it wherever they go because curse can be there in a moment. Baron should be up pretty soon. And they're just waiting for that next big Baron fight, and we'll see who comes out on top. But in the meantime, we have Pobolter once again pushing top lane, see if we can't get a big wave coming down to that tier two tower on top, which is half done with. I Honestly, I recognize that words are coming out of your mouth, but I, <laughs> I could not begin to tell you what they are. Um, I heard something about Pobelter, and you're right, that split push from Shen is definitely extremely aggressive. Uh, we do have Baron up, and Mono, you know, they have a fast Baron team, but if they're in that little cubby hole, allowing that quick Morgana ult, it's just a great setup for Curse to just ace them and then push an inhibitor, win the game. Mono trying to Nijaki. bait him in, though. Nijacky coming in. in. Nijacky going in, he's got the shield. The ultimate has been broken by Mono, but Curse, they're being aggressive. They're getting their Paradox with coming back in. The ultimate trying to close the gap, but Nijacky getting very low. Nijacky goes out, Elements. Ult out of desperation, Vladimir goes down as well. Elvis may not be able to get away. Ignite finishes him off. Mono now in full retreat. Curse trying to finish off what he can do. Nintendo does manage to live. Nintendo with a shred of Elvis. We got a yes, oh, and that flag. is the ace. And now Curse knows exactly what they want to do. They want to come for this. Uh, actually, they're going to back off and maybe go for the Baron. I, it's going to be tough. They, you know, have plenty of damage, but Pobelter and Crumbs are both low. Uh, really, they need to kind of just push, but they are pinging it, so we might see a very aggressive Baron for Curse. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to do it, but you saw that last fight. It almost turned in Mono's favor. Zig was safe in that background, but, you know, in the end, Cop, no damage on Cop, and so Cop was able to get in there, get those kills, and now we do see Curse is able to take down that Baron. They have enough survivability with Pobelter and Crumbs, so with that Baron, they're going to be extremely aggressive. The ace for Curse, and they can come down. Uh, the, I, I will just let you know, the players in chat are saying the clapping. They hear it. It's crazy. It is insane. And so, uh, you know, we'll see whether or not Curse can just continue to pressure this advantage all over Mono. Big shout outs to Cop. Look at how well he's doing. 8, 1, and 3. 346 creep kills. That is insane. How much total gold? 15k over the course of the game. That is a lot of money to have on a vein. He's just going to be doing so much damage right now. 359 AD. Yeah, and so, you know, like you said, he's got significant damage up, but you couple that, that with the Mundo, uh, the Nunu buff. He's got the Blood Boil when he's already got all this damage. Then you couple it with the Shield from Morgana. He's got the Shield. So this is a super support team for Cop, and it's, it's you know, that hyper carry kind of situation, a little bit shorter range than uh, Kog'Ma, but still has that fantastic damage output, and they're able to protect Cop. It's going to be extremely difficult. I mean, honestly, at this point, it almost feels like Mono oh. needs to pick someone off, Poe and they Belter. are chasing down Pobelter. He's out of position. He does get off his uh, dash, so he's going to be out of there, but uh, that could have been a dangerous situation for Mono. If Curse was not at base, they could have taken that opportunity to push down either of the other two available lanes, but they were not. They were back. They were shopping. And look at Cop right now. We got that Halo. He's got himself a Guardian Angel. He's not going anywhere. He's, if he happens to die, he's going to be coming right back. And you know what? I think it's about that time. Once you see a team like that building Guardian Angels on their main carries, it's, that's, that's a hard place to come back from. Mono is definitely on the ropes right now. Particularly, Top going down. particularly against the double AP comp. It does kind of some of that burst, but actually Pobelts are taking a significant amount of damage from Zig. Is going to be able to back out of there as the Baron regen. But uh, this is you know, a situation where Curse could you know, maybe continue with that split push, recognizing that they have that advantage now. Um, they could also just kind of barrel down, tank the tower, you know, know that they can drop it pretty quickly. Cop going to get some nice damage on here. And Nocturne is always in range. Actually, we have the Nocturne ultimate onto Zig. He's chasing him down. There is the fear. And Nintendo very close to going down as well. Zig is going to have to back out of there. Pixel with the ultimate. Nijacky very close to going down. And Cop going to be able to pick up some kills. But here's the GA from Cop. And now Zion Spartan very close to going down. And Cop actually going to go down as well. Paradoxical able to kite out. How many kills can Paradoxical get? He gets down one. But Paradoxical goes down. And now Nintendo exchanging with Newt. Nocturne, and there it is, a four for five, ace for Mono. Very close to picking that up, but we'll be able to stall out the game just a little bit shorter. We have the thunder sticks, we have the yelling, we have the fog on stage. I have no idea what's going on anywhere. <laughs>
I am so confused right now. <laughs> okay. But again, that you know, it's it, it's interesting. I almost thought that Curse was going to just destroy that fight. We saw Zig going down very quickly, but paradoxical, able to take down Cop even after the GA was gone. And so Mono with an effective turnaround. And now Nintendo is almost a little bit too tanky for them to deal with. Shen isn't the highest damage champion. Um, you know, it should be interesting to see. Nunu, you know, doesn't really increase their damage a lot. He gives Vayne a ton of damage. But if they can get up in Vayne's face, have Nintendo's Muno just chasing Vayne down, has that exhaust, have Paradoxical chasing Vayne down, then very quickly these fights could turn for Curse. And I'm kind of curious whether Curse is maybe going to stall now, wait for Cops GA to be up again, or if they think they can take him. I mean, that, that's got to be a demoralizing fight for Curse. They, you know, almost had it. That, that could have been the game. And then just barely not able to get it. A fantastic play from both teams. So um, it'll be interesting to see whether we wait for that GA or just continue with the push. Guardian Angel, you do get that extra life. But if you do use it, five minutes, you have to wait for it to come back up again. But you know what? Five minutes? That's a long time in League of Legends. Right. That's a lot of time in League of Legends. Yeah, and it will take a while. It will put, you know, Cop a little bit out of commission for some time. But, you know, Cop at the same time is very survivable. Um, I think maybe a little bit too aggressive that last fight, but just really fantastic play from Mono. And Curse, Nijaki is coming down, going after this dragon. Uh, while they kind of wait off for a second, they do have a 13k gold advantage, 14k with this dragon. And yet at the same time, Mono was able to pick up the fight. It's, it's just astounding, but... We'll have, we'll have to see whether they can pursue the blue. Uh, Paradoxical does have, a, you know, the fresh blue there. So um, in the future, you know, whether we can take those reds from Zig, if we can take those blues from Mono, and Curse could, you know, continue with that pushing. And even though Mono did win that big team fight, it was done in shreds. Mo just, Mundo was barely hanging on after that team fight, and that was with Curse having Baron. So it's, if they do decide to push in again without Baron, there will be a little bit more leeway for Mono to go ahead and take that fight. They do still have all of their inhibitor turrets up. We do got the second tier tower in bot still up. And it looks like, you know, Curse, they're just going to go ahead and let Mono push. Let them be aggressive. I think they're just going to go ahead and opt to take a turn on the defensive. But remember, Crumbs, he's here. He can ult in. We got Pobelter up top lane. He can ult in. So Mono has to be very careful where they pick their engages, when they pick their engages. We may see them wait till the next Baron, but we also remember we have to, they have, do have to make a move before that GA on Cop comes back up. And the big thing is I think both teams are a little scared right now. The next fight could decide this game because we've got great pushing power from Bane. He's got over 400 CS, so he's done his item build. He can just drop towers, have one of his teammates tank it for him. Kog'Maw the same exact way, only 300, but you know even so has significant damage output. Mundo could easily tank the turret, so the oh, next fight could easily just you know take an inhibitor, uh, maybe even win the game for a team. Curse there just for a moment. They're like, you know, let's just camp this bush. Let's just see if they come by. But we do have some pings going down from Mono. They have an idea where they are. Just going to go ahead and shove top while they can. They did have a nice little. They did get a good chunk of damage on the bot tower. So top is definitely the lane to push at the moment. They are here and close proximity to Baron. So just going to go ahead, let the wave push. Pobuds are going to be on his own, but Curse. Look at this. We got a nice little ambush waiting, seeing if Mono takes the bait. Yeah, and it's actually, you know, right now, all the map control is on Curse's you know, side. They have all this great ward coverage, and the place that they're standing, it's actually uh, one of those, you know, nice little blind spots. You come oh. up, uh, if they think that they're kind of grouping around the blue, all of a sudden you have a good this engage, and so we'll see whether Mono walks this into it. Bad. They are no, coming up. The bind again from Morgana. The from Nijacky. Nijacky coming in, you get the Morgana all of a sudden. It was a broken pixel, will go down immediately. We got the Nuno will slow down to 10 X. We got the full proc off, and Nintendo should be blown as well. Zion Spartan trying to stay alive. Bundo down, Nocturne down, Vlad is also down. Curse doing what they can to clean up. This might be it. Curse might just be able to push and win with this, but Paradoxal, he's not out of the fight yet. He's still in close proximity to Curse. We could, he could go in, snipe Night Jackie, but you know what? He's just going to head to play it safe, recall back to base, but this tower should be going down pretty quick, possibly the inhibitor as well. Actually, they, they might just, if they get a little bit, uh, a little bit friskier, if they manage to get a kill on one of the two remaining members of Mono, they might be able to push for the win. Yeah, now yeah, here, Baron is up. 
Here's the thing, Curse, they got the inhibitor. Uh, they can now recall or they can go for the Baron. They will have plenty of time, actually, so they should you know, go for the Baron, I would think. Um, they might just recall, though. And so the benefit of recalling, what Curse is trying to do here, they already have the inhibitor. They know that they don't want to be you know, stalled underneath the towers. We've seen Mono able to stall Curse underneath those towers when Curse is trying to push. So by going back, they can force a fight at Baron. But actually, we see we Zig go. and Paradoxical going for Baron, just the two of them. They don't have anyone tanking, but Zig has plenty of damage. They're dropping it extremely quickly. I can't believe what I'm watching right now because Curse is definitely out of position. They have no idea what's going on. Janna coming up, and they're going to be able to take that Baron. So a huge Baron for Mono. But now we've got Shen, and we've got Cop, and they're going to be able to get out of there. And there it is, the aggressive Baron play for Mono. And that was always a concern if Curse doesn't get back fast enough. But I don't think they expected that without any of their tanks, they would just go for it. And just, you know, fantastic awareness by Mono, able to sneak that in there. Wonderful, fantastic timing from Mono to know when to swoop in and grab the Baron. But unfortunately, that's all that's really going to do for now is to stall the game out just a tad a little bit longer. Curse, they're going to have a bigger, rougher defense to try and break in order to get the remaining towers that they need. Inhibitor is down top lane, but Mono, they have the buff. Does every member have it? Every member was up. They're going to go ahead and take this opportunity to shove mid lane. What can they do with this Baron buff? We got the top lane. We got the super minions starting to push. If Mono's gonna make a move and try and push mid tower, they need to do it soon. I mean, there's, there's definitely plenty of time for them to sit back. They know that they have a very strong tower pushing team, but at the same time, I don't know that they wanna risk it. They know if they go out into the open field, that gives per, uh, Curse the perfect engage opportunity. And if Mono loses one more fight, that's game over. Curse is just going to backdoor that Nexus, be able to take it down. So Mono wants to sit back, get a little bit more farm, push it further and further into that late game, recognizing how strong Vlad is, recognizing how strong Cog is. And here's the thing, Vayne, how much Vayne is farmed already? Vayne is done. Like he, but, Vayne, so look, look at Vayne, look at Vayne right now. Sold boots, second right. Phantom Dancer. But Vayne's not getting any stronger at this point. Cog still can get stronger. Vladimir still can get stronger. So, you know, if they can continue to push, it moves more and more into their advantage. <laughs> and, you know, Shen not going to be scaling as much as someone like Vladimir. So they, they're perfectly fine with stalling out this game with that surprise Baron. It's just, we're, we're entering super late game right now. We see, like I said, we've gotten to the point. Cop has sold boots to get another fan dancer. 93% crit chance. 327 AD. Anytime Vayne hits you, it is going to hurt bad. Yeah, Cop is the man right now, and he knows it. He's looking for a fight. He wants to take people down. We see Curse going for that dragon, but again, there's really not a need for it at this point. The dragon, you know, kind of becomes meaningless. But we see Nintendo and Pope Ultra squaring off. Uh, you know, for the most part, I think this game is probably going to stall until the next Baron, maybe, because Cop, they don't want to, you know, tower dive. They don't want to go against this Baron from Mono. And at the same time, Mono doesn't want to push risk losing the game when Curse has such a strong advantage in these fights. Mono, they really have no choice to defend. Like I said, Inhibitor is down, and while they did get the Baron, they can't do all too much with it. Anytime, anytime they go out from their own base, they risk getting caught out by Curse. And Curse, their entire team doesn't even need to be there. Nocturne Shen, not too far away, but uh, we may see Curse Trying again for another trap in a bush, another disastrous face check may decide the game if they decide to camp out some of these bushes here up by the barren area once again. But Mono, go oh, ahead, continue Zig. to take their own advantage. Zig, he's a little bit caught out. We see Curse making their move. Will they be able to catch up? No, they're going to go ahead and back off. But you know what? Curse, they know Mono may be a little bit too aggressive. They know they're going to go searching for something. If they can catch them out in a bush again, Possibly in the lower jungle this time, not necessarily around uh, blue buff, because we still have a little while before Baron comes up. We got a few minutes. We got a while still. Yeah, and Crumb's going to be able to take that red buff. That's going to deny some damage from uh, Ziggs. So that's definitely going to be huge. Giving it to Vayne. So Vayne actually triple potted that nice little white goal. Oh, just double potted actually, but with the red buff, <laughs> and they will be pushing down this bottom tower. Pobelts are just going to tank it, and now with that split, they have the top inhibitor down. Curse knows even against the Baron, Curse can be extremely aggressive, and the Baron is actually down now, so Curse, the Baron down uh, with that top inhibitor. They can split push Nocturne and continue to pressure this advantage. Curse, once again, at Monozor, Baron buff is down. 
Cobb can just go from a distance and pick anyone off, provided he's got the team support to back him up. Then we can get Pull Belter on the front line. That'd be nice, but we'll get mid. We got Crumbs. Mid tower all on his own. Intended is there to keep him off just a little bit. But once we see these waves coming down, but in the meantime, look, we, the inhibitor may be up, but we still have some super minions pushing here in the top lane. But Mono pinging down bot lane. I think they may try and make a move on the split push of Curse. Waiting for the means to come up. We got the bind in on pixels. Quite a bit of damage. And here's the thing. Those super minions up top, we do have the inhibitor respawning for Mono, but they have to either defend it or lose it once again. So this is a perfect opportunity for Curse to continue stalling and just get a perfect engage on Mono. Mono's going to have to be pulled all over the place. We see Vladimir in that top lane, while Crumbs can just sit here and push down mid, and maybe we'll see a switch from Curse. And yes, they actually are moving. They are coming to this mid lane. Can move top once again and take that inhibitor and continue uh, pressuring Mono. This is all a matter of timing, knowing when the minion waves will be available to push. But you know what? We do have a naked inhibitor up top. Is Curse just going to go for it? You're going to take out these creeps? They will. Pobelt are going to be up in front, tanking all the damage we need to. Nijacky is here. We can engage. We got the bind here on Pixel. Mono's bagging him off just a little bit. But you know what? Nice little diversion. We got Nintendo up front. We get in the cleaver. Shirelia is being popped. The Curse is trying to get away. We got the Morgana ult. We got the Nocturne ult. Everyone's going to be where they need to be. Curse trying to do damage on Mono. Zygmin caught out elements in the middle of everything, getting the ult down. Intended will fall as well. Zion Spartan trying to get away, but he will not. The Ignite going down. GA, Zion Spartan, he's got nowhere to go. You can't leave. And Curse has them routed. Zig is perfectly fine. Pretty high health, high health, has that GA, but just can't get into the to deal damage. Everyone from Curse very low, but Will Elements and Cop turn into him. There's the dive from Cop, the slow from Zig, and now Zig chasing after Cop. How many damage can he do? How many people can he pick off? Actually picking off Morgana with that ultimate. He's got the movement speed from Pixel, but he doesn't want to continue pressuring with Chen, with Nocturne back there. So a one fight for Curse, but then Mono with the return, able to pick up a couple of kills and not allow Curse to take an advantage there. <laughs> My heart is just like skipping beats at this point. We're 50 minutes, 5-0 into this game. It's like, what else, what else could you possibly buy? Look at, look at Cop, 21k over the course of this game. That is insane. That's crazy. Yeah, it really is astounding, but we do see that Zig has caught up in his farm. He is almost equal to Vayne now, just a little bit behind, but uh, if he can get those final few items, again, he can you know be a little bit more comfortable in these fights. And Paradoxical trying to get engaged, really because Mono recognizes they can't allow Curse to just slowly win the game against them. So trying to see if he can get back to Vayne. And actually, Zig just going all on his own for this Baron. Oh, Once again, Curse has to this realize, though, they are so close to them, they have to know. And here it is, Cobelter and Crumbs coming, and this could be huge. Paradoxical is there, but we have the ultimate from Crumbs. He is going to dive onto Cog, but now Cop is out of position, and Crumbs is going what? to go down. Paradoxical, what? can he get a stare? Chasing away Pobelter, and this is going to be a Baron for Mono. I don't know that Curse can defend this. So Baron, when Mono is already moving into that late game comp, is going to be huge, and it's going to be so difficult for Curse to continue applying the pressure that they have been. We have a full minute before Crumbs is back in the game. If Mono wants to make a big push, they need to do it very soon. We still have some super minions pushing down the top lane. If they want to take some towers, if they want to take some objectives, now is the opportunity. Minions in the mid will be going down soon, but hopefully we get someone from Mono to go back to base because we have these super minions going towards the Nexus Towers very soon. But second tier tower in mid going down. Mono continuing the push. Please don't tell me it's please don't tell me Mono's trying to race the super minions. I hope that I, isn't the case. I think so well, I think <laughs> while they have that Baron, they want to go after this inhibitor, take it down really quickly. Nijacky actually getting caught, and Nijacky <laughs> goes down almost immediately. This is huge. Cop is caught out of position. We'll dive back into him. There's the GA. Elements throwing off the ultimate, but Mono is going to win this fight. Elements going down, and there is Zig picking up Cop, and <laughs> Mono is going to win the game. They're going to get the inhibitor. They're going to be able to push underneath these towers. They have the 5v3 advantage, and with Zig, they have it. And Mono winning game number two puts the series to 1-1. One, one. We will go into game number three. Mono with the GG, able to take it from Curse, even though Curse was ahead 20k yeah. gold at one point in time. The what crowd is, is going on? Insane. What is going on? Oh my god! <laughs> what? Is, what? 
This is the atmosphere. <laughs> this is the atmosphere that we have at IPL4. Everyone going to say, we have StarCraft right behind us in their room. And guess what? They all hear us. They hear this thunderous applause. And they're going, what the hell is in that other room overpowering us? Well, it's League of Legends. And we have some fantastic games here. IPL4. And we are coming into game number three, Mono versus Curse.